on wellbeing is 100% mindset. My name is Jodie Sharman and I sit on the Victorian NEBA committee. For the last three years, NEBA has allowed me to hold events that help raise awareness about health, wellbeing and mental illness. Today will be the 10th session I have sponsored over the last three years. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Fiorenza and Neva for allowing me to use this platform and my position to do so. Life has changed as we once knew it. Only 12 months ago, on Friday the 24th of May, lots of us were at the Crown Casino enjoying a fantastic long lunch after UAC was held and over 100 exhibitors were in the hall. At that lunch, we had a guest speaker who got up and bravely talked about, sorry, her loss in her husband and brother to suicide. I thought to myself at that lunch, that poor lady having to get up and talk about what she did, but she was so strong. I went up to her at the lunch and I thanked her for sharing her story. And I told her that I believed that what she shared will have impact on other people. I did explain to her that my family had people suffering from mental illness and I'd been through a lot with my family over the years. And I really did appreciate what she delivered to the crowd. I think there was about 600 in the room that day. The next Friday, which was the 31st of May, sorry, I wasn't supposed to cry. I really tried to do this without crying. Uh, so a week later, I was at my desk in Collins Street when I got a call that my father had died from my mum. She told me he had committed suicide. So a week later, I was experiencing what she had experienced. My whole world changed and my passion for delivering these talks and workshops just got stronger. I think that the more we talk about this and the more we help people, people will become stronger and know that it's okay to say that something's wrong. Today we have Andrew Jobling, who helped me since I first heard him speak in December last year. Today will be the fourth time that I've heard Andrew speak, and today's a different topic, so I'm looking forward to hearing what he delivers. But in his talk only two weeks ago, Andrew delivered to us um, about living a long life and how to achieve that. He talked about being grateful. And for the first time, I actually didn't cry that day and the next few days when I talked about my dad. He, he taught me to understand what grateful meant. And I now can say that I am grateful that I got to spend 38 years with my dad because some people definitely don't get that long with their parents. This Sunday will mark one year since I got that dreadful call, but from the help of people like Andrew, I will not probably cry as much as I have, and I will use the time to remember the good times that we were able to share with him. Andrew is an author of seven published books, including his latest book, The Wellness Puzzle which has sold in excess of 200 copies. I personally have bought two. My sister and I have both read it and it's helped us a lot. On that note, I'll hand you over to Andrew and I'm looking forward to hearing about the next piece in the puzzle. Thank you, Jodie. Thank you, wonderful, for, for, for sharing. Uh, Lisa, you're still sharing your screen, I believe. Oh, thank you. Um, wow, what a... <laughs> I don't know how many tears you've got flowing, Jody. after that. There's probably a few people with, with a box of tissues right now. Um, but thank you for your vulnerability and for sharing that. And, wow, that's a, that's a wonderful way to, to start a session like this because of the courage that it's taken Jody to share that. And obviously the passion and the purpose she now has to try and really make a difference in the lives of people. So, look, I want to thank you. Jody, you again, um, and I want to thank Fiorenza at NEBA for allowing me to speak. And I'm excited that there are so many people here. And, you know, I would really prefer to be standing in front of you all in a room, but at the moment, obviously, that's not possible. But uh, I, I just, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I get to share some ideas that hopefully will make a difference in your life. I'm just really interested to know um, how many of you were at the last session that I did if you could sort of maybe um, just maybe put a, a thumbs up or a um, or a, a note in the chat room I'm just really interested to know how many people here were at the last session how many people are, are new but um, 
because I'm going to look, I'm going to go over a little bit of old ground. I'm going to cover some stuff that I did talk about um, last time, but I'm going to introduce some new stuff as well. So thank you everyone for sharing. And I'm going to really, what I want to encourage, I love seeing that chat room just fill up. I love it. It gets me excited and it obviously doesn't take a lot to excite me. So there's a lot of new people, which is wonderful. So that's, that's really terrific. Um, so if you were new in the last, if you were at the last session, uh, you'll know that it was very interactive and I want this to be interactive as well. I'm going to share, I'm going to do five segments. So there'll be five parts to this presentation and, and I'll share my screen for a short period of time and then we'll come back together and I'm going to ask for inter, international uh, interaction from you. Uh, either in the chat section or, you know, take yourself off mute if you want to share something. But I think, Jody, what a wonderfully powerful uh, start to this. So, again, I want to thank you for your, for your sharing of what you've just shared. And, and I'm now just going to go into a presentation. My, my sole goal is to help every single one of you that are listening to this live your best life. And, and I want, you know, I've had 30 years in the health and wellbeing industry and, and I've, for 30 years, I've been working hard to try and help people be healthier and fitter and leaner and, you know, have a six pack and get buns of steel if that's what they want or, you know, run far, faster, further, jump higher, whatever. And, and I've realised that that's not really necessarily what people are after. Uh, and, and, you know, I come out of a professional football background. I played footy for St Kilda many years ago. So if there are any St Kilda supporters in the audience, I'd love to hear from you right now in the chat room. Go, quick Go Saints would just give me a bit of a lift because often I speak to groups and I rarely do I see a Go Saints. Oh, there we go. We've got a Go. What do you mean, boo? Thanks, Sophie. We've got, thank Karen. Good. We've got some Saints supporters. Love it. Wonderful. All right, so let's get into this. I'm going to share my screen, and if you can't see it, let me know. Um, okay, so hopefully you can all see my screen. So, so Jody, you'll let me know if you can't see that. But um, the, the topic of today, we're talking about well-being, but I just think it's so much more than that. And when I decide to write the wellness puzzle, which is my seventh book, as Jody mentioned. You know, my first book was a book called Eat Chocolate, Drink Alcohol and Be Lean and Healthy. And, and I was very much into nutrition and exercise. And I used to think that you needed to eat well and exercise regularly if you were going to be healthy and, and live a long, happy, healthy life. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I still think that's important. But I know now that wellness is 100% mindset. Now, you, that might sound like a really out there statement how can it be a hundred percent mindset well surely there's exercise yep and surely you've got to eat well of course and surely you've got to get plenty of sleep and there's all these other things that that go along with wellness but you don't do anything that you don't first formulate an idea in your head i mean i'm sure you'd agree with that so nothing you do not take an action that you don't first think about so 100% of the actions you take start in your mind, in your mindset. And that's why it's all about mindset. It is very much around the power of our thoughts. Now, so in the first segment, I'm going to talk about this mind-body connection. So if you were at the last session that I did, I'm going to cover some old ground here, but I think this is critical to, for you to understand the power of the mind-body connection. Now, now Jody shared... A, a very tragic story and unfortunately it's a story we hear way 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 too often of people taking their own lives uh, but it's not just that I just think we live currently we're living in this world where mental health issues suicide cancer you know I lost my mum to cancer 15 years ago and I'm going to touch on her story as we go through today uh, you know, there's sickness, there's diabetes, there's all sorts of stuff. And and we can, and so easy to blame the environment. It's easy to blame the quality of the food we eat. It's easy to blame, you know, too much work. You know, it's the let's blame the government. Let's blame Donald Trump. Let's just blame whatever we can. But at the end of the day, I believe the results and the success and the well-being that we experience is, is all about what's happening in our brain. And there's the absolute an immediate connection, and I want to touch on that. You know, I, I spoke last time about 
uh, living a life of joyful longevity. So I want to touch on that again because I'm hoping that every single person that's sitting wherever you're sitting, you know, on your couch, in your bed, in your PJs, isn't this cool? You get to sit in your PJs and, and, and be inspired. You wouldn't be going out to a conference at Crown Casino in your PJs, but you can sit there and relax and be comfortable, which I think is wonderful. So what joyful longevity. If I was going to define joyful longevity, I mean, the two words it's pretty much say explain it themselves, but joyful in my mind means more than just joy. It means happiness. It means satisfaction. It means love. It means purpose. It means, it means living your best life. Longevity means living it for a long time. You know, so my vision for me, my personal vision is I want to live beyond a hundred years of age. Now the condition is that I'm not sitting in a chair rocking and dribbling with a tube up my nose and eating my breakfast out of a straw. I'm talking about a life of joyful longevity. If you look at the, the image on the screen right now, that lady was in that picture was 106 years old and she was dancing and happy and loving her life. She would be the epitome of what you would consider joyful longevity. Now, when, when there was a survey done on 50 people that had lived beyond 100 to try and work out what is the secret to joyful longevity, and they asked these 50 people that had lived happily and joyfully past 100 years of age, you know, what was, what was the key to that? You know, they asked them all sorts of questions about exercise, nutrition, lifestyle habits, attitude habits, and they were incredibly surprised with what they came up with. It was far, far less about nutrition. It was far less about exercise. It was far less about sleep. It was far less about lifestyle habits. In fact, I'm going to put up on the screen right now some words that are going to show you and share with you the, the secret to these people living long lives. Every single word that you see on your screen now reflects an emotion, a feeling. Every single word you see on your screen right now reflects a thought, a mindset, or a perspective on how we look at life, how we look at circumstances. And, and Jody mentioned gratitude, uh, and, and I spoke a lot about gratitude last time. And there's something that happens, I want to explain what happens when, when emotion happens in our body now I, I want to explain this to you and be really clear on this there's no such thing as good emotion and bad emotion all right and and because it's so easy to label it isn't it when we're grateful and loving and forgiving and joy, that's good and when we're angry or we're resentful or we're anxious or scared or fearful that's bad i don't see it that way i used to see it that way but not anymore what i see is emotion is the indicator it's your body saying okay we're either in alignment with what's important or we're out of alignment, okay? So if you're feeling grateful and loving and forgiving and joyful and hopeful and, and, and on purpose, that means, you know what that means? It means you're in the zone, you're in flow and everything's aligning beautifully. When you feel anger, it's okay, it's not bad. When you feel anxious or fearful or scared or uncertain or doubtful, it's not, this is not saying, you don't want to go start beating yourself up and say, oh, I shouldn't be feeling that emotion. Feel it. Validate it. And then work out where it's come from because it simply means something's not aligning with what you want in your life. And if you can look at emotion and say, okay, that feeling I've got is telling me something. It's either telling me I'm on track or it's telling me I need to make some changes. Then if you can get good at making those changes and, and going from, anger to gratitude, if you can go from fear to love and change your perspective, that's when, what, this is what's happening. Let me explain what happens. Your emotional state, your mindset, which leads to an emotion, will impact your immune system. There's a physiological effect, and this is the mind-body connection. So when you feel positive, grateful, loving, what's happening is you act it's actually strengthening your immune system. And the studies and research is showing how this is strengthening immune system. When you stay in anxiety or fear or anger, what's happening is it's actually shutting down your immune system. Mm, that's interesting, isn't it? What about your DNA? This is a DNA strand and, and the little green bits on the end of it are what are called telomeres. Now, a telomere is the direct indicator of your, your longevity, how long you're likely to live. Guess what impacts the telomeres? Your emotional state. When you're angry, when you're fearful, when you're anxious, it shrinks. When you're grateful, loving, happy, joyful, it lengthens. 
you know, there's, there's research showing this, there's tests that are actually showing this as proof that your emotional state will strengthen your DNA, which means it's going to inc increase your chance of longevity. You know, there's research and lots of research around the impact of your emotional state on your brain health, on your cortisol activity in your body. Cortisol is a stress hormone. When you're feeling loving and grateful, there's much less cortisol and free radical activity in your body. And there's, far, and, and there's far more positive hormones that are surging through your body, leading you to not just better physiology, but when you, you know, when you feel happy and grateful and positive, you make better choices, you're more likely to go for a run, you're more likely to eat better food, you're more likely to do the things that you know you should be doing. Okay, so before we get into segment two, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. And I'm going to come back and say hello to everyone to see um, to, to see where we're at. And I'm going to ask a question because we're human. We're, we all go through periods of anxiety. You know, I'm the first to admit it. You know, there are times in life where I'm sad, I'm unhappy, I'm stressed, I'm angry. I want to ask you this. When you feel that emotion, what strategies do you have to bring you back? To, you know, when you notice some sort of negative emotion, whether it's anger or anxiety or fear, what do you do to come back and bring yourself into gratitude or to love? If you, if you want to share something, I'd love for you to type something in the chat room because I think now's a good... I don't have all the answers. Um, Andrew takes his dog for a walk and I think what a wonderful thing to do. Exercise, snuggling my dog, listening to music, music. Try and feel grateful and I think... Um, oh, sorry, it's moving so quickly, Mike. That's a wonderful thing when you can look for gratitude. So I hope everyone can see the chat room as it's just filling up with wonderful comments. Um, I can't keep up with it. But, um, you know, it was people are talking about go to nature, reading books, yoga, poodle therapy. I've got uh, Maltese Shih Tzu therapy. My little Maltese Shih Tzu is absolute therapy for me. Uh, notice it, name it, sit with it until it subsides. Lisa, that's wonderful. Listen to music. And I, and I really believe you do need to go through that emotion, experience it and and feel it. And, and then, but don't stay there too long. I think my greatest message is you don't want to live with anxiety or fear or, or anger because it will lead you down the bad path. And part of the issue with a lot of depression or, you know, even suicide, and I don't, and I'm not pro proclaiming to have the answers here. Tell someone you love them. I think that's, Richard, that's a great thing to say. I'll call my mum and tell her I love you. When you tell someone, you help someone, you say something, you encourage someone, doesn't that feel wonderful? So feel the emotion. It's okay. You're not bad. There's nothing wrong with you. You're human, but don't stay there. Find... Go through this list of the, the chat room right now. There's some amazing uh, strategies and solutions there. Write down something that works for you. Anyway, I'm going to keep moving because I don't want to keep you all day. But thank you, everyone, for that wonderful, wonderful contribution. Um, okay, so segment two. In my book, The uh, the Wellness Puzzle, I talk about seven pieces of the puzzle. Now, I'm going to, sh I'm going to uh, share a couple of them with you today, but the, probably the most important one I want to share with you is this one. Num the number one piece in my wellness puzzle is purpose, and I believe it's the foundation of well-being for a couple of reasons, okay? I look at Jody, and when, I, when Jody was speaking earlier, what I saw was passion and I saw purpose. She's got a purpose. Losing her dad was tragic, but it's given her a purpose. And that purpose is to inspire other people. It's to help and make sure that other people don't, don't experience the same thing that she's experienced. And I can see it. I've lost my mum to cancer. And one of the reasons why I do what I do, because I am on a mission, a passion, a purpose to impact people's lives. And, and I think what happens when you have purpose there's a couple of things that happen. Number one is you wake up every day on point and feeling like, yeah, I'm excited. Every day I wake up and I don't always, you know, I don't always bounce out of bed full of energy, but I always wake up and I feel like a new day, a new opportunity to help more people, to impact more lives. And that excites me. That excitement, that positive emotion is keeping me healthy. So that's the first thing. 
Second thing is, it, it, because I want to be making a difference well and truly beyond 100 years of age, it means I make better choices. I eat breakfast because I know I need to, if I, if, and, and I exercise regularly, and I make good food choices, and I purify my water and my air. Why? Because I want to do everything I can do to keep me living longer so that I can fulfill my purpose. Now, so what I want to help you do today now, Again, I don't dare to believe that I can solve the problem to help all of you find your purpose. But what I do want to do is share some stories and some ideas that might get you started. And I believe purpose has a face. Okay? Now, see, a lot of people misunderstand purpose with pleasure, misunderstand purpose with achievement, mis misunderstand purpose with with um you know, accumulation of, of whether it's money or fame or whatever. I mean, how many people do you know? And, and when I was talking about this or thinking about this, Robin Williams came into my mind. You know, what a brilliant actor, what an amazing actor. But he, he committed suicide, which tends to indicate to me that he'd lost purpose. And you see all sorts of rich and famous people and they do incredible things, yet they're either addicted or they're suicidal or they're not happy. So it's not the accumulation that we think it is. I don't know how many of you have ever read a book called Man's Search for Meaning or you ever heard of a guy called Viktor Frankl. Now, I'm going to I've got to go through this quite quickly, but Viktor Frankl was a, a, a Austrian psychologist who he was a Jewish, Jewish Austrian psychologist who ended up in a concentration camp back in World War II. And he wrote his book about how he survived that experience. And you know, he was taken to a place that was the most brutal experience you could ever possibly imagine. He had every possible pleasure stripped from him. And he said the only people who were able to survive that experience were the people who were able to find meaning in their life. And for him, the meaning for him was his wife. He, he thought, how am I going to get through this? And he's, he was recently married before he got taken into his the camp his wife got taken to another concentration camp and in his mind it was her face and that joy and that love and that and that um that determination that he would see her again that kept him going now the, he talks about an experience of another guy in the concentration camp who after a year or two they there was word that the war would be over on a certain date and this guy stayed alive, stayed alive, because for him, that date was his meaning. When that date came and went and the war was still on and the concentration, he was still in concentration camp, within 24 hours, that guy was dead because his meaning had been taken from him. Purpose has a face. Purpose, purpose is here in your heart. Purpose is about love. And, and when you know what's important to you, you will make better choices. You will focus. You will survive. You will do the things you need to do. I'm going to talk quickly about this lady. This is my greatest hero, This my greatest supporter. This is my mum. And I, I, I wish I had the time to tell you in more detail, but let me just tell you this. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in her early 50s. Um, she had it treated medically treated, she had operations to remove the cancer, she was given the all clear. 18 months later, that, that cancer reappeared in her liver and she was given two years to live. Now, she was faced with death and, and she had to make a decision to survive. She had some questionable habits. She smoked, she drank, she had low self-esteem, she had a whole range of issues that she didn't know if she could change until she said, why do I want to live? For her... That it was very clear in her mind. Her purpose became clear. Her family was her. That was her why. That would they were the faces. Her husband, her kids. This face you're looking at right now was the reason. I don't know. That's probably a reason why she'd want to get out as fast as possible. But that was a reason why she wanted to be around. And then to watch what she did as a result of that, she gave up smoking. She stopped drinking. She started to make changes. She started meditating. She started affirming. She started hypnosis. She started exercising. She took this two-year death sentence and she was able to extend her life by another 15 years. And look, she's gone today. Um, but... But I talk about this lady every day. She's my greatest. In her situation, 
you know, she is my hero and I wrote a book about her called Dance Until It Rains. You know, she's been gone over 15 years and this lady is still changing lives and she will continue to do the, that long after I'm gone because of her legacy that she's left. Purpose has a face. So as I'm telling you these stories, I just want you to, I want you to start thinking about in your life, who is the, what's the face or faces that will get you bouncing out of bed, doing stuff you don't necessarily want to do that will keep you moving and feeling great and positive and focused and grateful. When I wrote my first book, Eat Chocolate, Drink Alcohol and Be Lean and Healthy, let me be honest with you, it was more about fame, it was more about credibility, it was more about you know, saying I'm an author than it was about anything else. Uh, I didn't really know what, what I wanted in my life. At that point in my life, I was jumping from one thing to another. And I'll tell you for me that the penny drop moment was when I, just a, a week or, or a, a few weeks after that book was released back in 2004, I started receiving messages and emails from people. And they're on your screen, you can see that. And it was those messages that all of a sudden I realised I had a power to impact lives. I had a power to change people's lives. That for me, the trigger went just in my head, it just snapped and I said, this is what I'm here for. This is what I'm meant to do. You can see someone right now in front of you who's incredibly passionate about this message, who wants you to live your best life. That's why I'm here. That's what I do. So like Jody, my passion and purpose is to help you avoid sickness and live with optimal well-being, live joyful longevity. That's purpose. I mean, think about Mother Teresa. What what kept her going through poverty and everything she sacrificed? It was the love of other people and the desire to help people. And what kept Nelson Mandela surviving after 27 years incarcerated in, in jail because of a purpose and a passion to inspire and help people? Who? What was it that kept Fred Hollows going, uh, you know, and travelling the world and giving of his time to help third world countries and people that were suffering with side issues how what kept him going was his t absolute passion and the faces of the people he was helping to see the difference he was making was was so profoundly impacting in his life oh meredith i had my hat is off to you Meredith, good on you. Stay positive. Um, what I'd like you to do now is, is just type in your chat room. What's your face? What's the face? Whose face will get gets you up, gets you out of bed? Is it one face? Is it many faces? Is it is it a is it a global face? Um, it, it doesn't have to be big it just has to be a, a love so intense and so passionate that you're willing to go through the things you need to go through because everything you need to do to be healthy is simple but you need a reason your purpose you know well Leon, work is okay why not i mean because you're obviously in your work you're helping people a dog's face absolutely i know my little dog's face gets me going 50 years that's wonderful. 50 years marriage. I'm so sorry, Paul, to hear about your brother. Um, thank you all so much. I just want you to think about these faces whenever you, you're struggling, whenever, whenever things are a bit tough or whenever you're faced with things that you need to do, think about that face and think about the impact that you are having. You are having an impact on, on every single person in your family and in your community by being the best that you can be. So again, I just want to thank you for sharing as we go back into the presentation. Okay, that's all been pretty heavy, hasn't it? Now I'm gonna talk segment three. I'm gonna share now, the next two segments are gonna be pretty simple and a bit more lighthearted, um, but you know this stuff. See. I'm a real true believer after 30 years in health and well-being, I've been telling people, trying to teach people how to eat, but what I've realised is people know what to do. I mean, I'm going to go through stuff now. You know it all. And so the question as you watch 
and listen to what I'm talking about now is not what are you, know? you'll go, yeah, I know that. But I want you to ask yourself the question, am I doing it? Okay. Now, and then I also want you to connect your actions, the things you are doing and not doing with that face or the faces that you just wrote in the chat room. Because if you don't connect your actions with that bigger purpose or that that face that's most important to you, then now's the time to make the connection because every choice you make, everything you put in your mouth, don't put in your mouth, whether you exercise or don't exercise, everything you do will have a ripple effect and is going to impact the people and the things and the places that you want to impact the most, okay? Critically important. You know, it was Hippocrates who said it two and a half thousand years ago, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Your body is the most amazing thing ever. Your body will heal itself, help itself grow, strengthen. You don't need medication. We don't need, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying get off, saying get off your medication, but if you've got a healthy body, a body, a strong immune system, your body will deal and heal and help itself. So let's look at seven things you probably already know. The first thing is, now... Again, it's almost embarrassing and, and I'm insulting your intelligence here, but you know that breakfast is important. You know, I'm pretty sure you know how important breakfast is. I'm pretty sure you know that uh, it's an important thing. And, and you know, yes, I know there's a lot of different theories out there, but I'm going to talk about what I've seen over 30 years and what I believe. And I believe the, kicks, the best way to kickstart your day, the best way to give you energy, the best way to get your metabolism burning, the best way to give you energy, the best way to make sure that you make better choices later in the day is eat a healthy breakfast. But I'm pretty sure most of you already know that. Question, are you doing it? Number two is get your metabolism firing and how do you do that? Well, if I think of an analogy, the best analogy I can give you is if, you're, if you like camping, then you will know that if you're camping and it's winter and you know, if you're in Victoria, some of you are in Victoria and you, you like going camping in winter, you'll probably know that you start a fire and you want that fire burning all day long. So when you to keep a fire burning, well, to start the fire, you put fuel on it, quality fuel. To keep it burning, you put fuel on it regularly. Now, here's a couple of questions for you. When you put fuel on the fire, I mean, if you were to put fuel on the fire every five, six, seven hours, would the fire keep burning? I don't think it would. You'd need to put fuel on the fire every maybe 30, 60 minutes. And the next question I have is when you put fuel on the fire, do you put it on when the fire's going out or do you put it on while it's still burning strong? So I'm going to suggest to you that you need to be putting some healthy, natural, protein-based snacks into your body every 60 to 90 minutes to keep that metabolic fire burning. Keep it burning. That'll help your energy. That'll keep you feeling great. That'll help burn fat. That'll help give your body the nutrients that it needs so that it can fight its own battles. Now, I know I'm probably raising questions here, um, more questions than I've answered, but that's okay. This is starting a conversation. I just really want to get you thinking and get you asking questions about this. Eat the five colours. Now, if you were at the last session we that I spoke at, you'll know I mentioned eating the five colours. There's five different colour groups. And yes, last time I said Coca-Cola does not fit into the red category. Twisties does not fit into the yellow category. Uh, I'm sure you could find Ribena does not fit into the purple category, okay? Uh, I'm talking about fruits and vegetables. And if you can get into the habit of every day consuming at least one from one fruit or vegetable, or better, one fruit and vegetable from each of those five colour groups, you're going to give your body more of the, the full spectrum of nutrients that are going to keep you healthy, keep you doing what you want to do. You're not eating because you necessarily love eating vegetables. You're doing it because of the face, the people you care about the most, the example you're setting, the energy you want to have, the people, you, the kids you want to be around, the grandkids you want to be with, the example you want to set. That's why you're doing this. Look after your gut health, number four. Make sure you're eating lots of healthy foods. 70% of your immune system's in your gut. Probiotic foods and, and, um, and fermented foods are wonderful, but natural, healthy foods, less processed foods. Stress, processed food will kill good gut bacteria and will cause sickness. Look after your gut. Increase your omega-3 intake. Why? Because omega-3 is the most 
amazing natural and uh, anti-inflammatory there is and most diseases are caused through inflammation a lot of our inflammation comes through the foods we eat through carbohydrates and processed foods uh, inflammatory foods which lead to disease more fish deep sea cold water fatty fish um, as much as you can as much as you can handle and supplement if you need to with a multivitamin with an omega-3 supplement if you're not getting enough nutrients get a good quality plant-based natural supplement and number seven Drink lots and lots of pure, clean water to flush toxins, to hydrate your body, to make sure everything your body does, it does the best it can. Now, I have gone through that very fast. Wine is fruit. It comes from grapes. Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> oh, we've got a lot of people. Yeah, chocolate is a vegetable. It comes from beans. Yes, thanks, Penny. That's absolutely right. Chocolate, why is chocolate not a colour? Uh, who's that? Who's that, Jody? Anyway, let me ask you a question. Of those seven things, so we talked about breakfast, we talked about snacking regularly, we talked about the five colours, we talked about gut health, we talked about um, omega three, I talked about supplementation, I talked about water. What is the one thing that you think? Yeah, I need to do. I, I should probably make a change in that. If you're going to pick one of those, what would it be? Drink more water. Thanks, Michelle. And I think water's a biggie. And I, I think, do you know what? If you if you can find one of those and just work on that one, yeah, the five colours is a good one. And I think you'll find that even if one simple change will will ripple out and will affect a whole range of areas. Looks like um, water's winning. But, yeah, sparkling water uh, is okay. Is it Janelle? Um, you just don't want to live on sparkling water. Why, look, we've got a lot of people talking about wine. You know, my first book was Eat Chocolate, Drink Alcohol and Be Lean and Healthy. So don't, don't let me think, let me give the indip- indication that alcohol is not a good thing. I love it. And it's part of, I believe, of a healthy diet. And I think you all know that it's um, moderation. You know, yes, red wine is an antioxidant, but we're talking about a glass maybe every now and then, not a bottle. Okay? It's not the more the better. You know, chocolate is also actually, a dark chocolate also is an antioxidant, but we're talking about a piece or two, not a block. You know what I'm saying? There's that moderation piece, which I think you all know this stuff. Um, tea, yep, tea, herbal tea certainly is a good option. Um, congratulations, you know, on becoming a vegetarian. Just make sure you're getting all the nutrients and the, uh, all the proteins that you need. So, again, thank you, um, so, Leanne, more water has healed my damaged liver. Thank you for sharing that. So, you, look, again, this is stuff that you know. The question is you need to find your reason why you're going to actually start to do these things that you already know. Go back to your purpose. Right, let's go back into it. You guys are doing incredibly well. And, again, I thank you all for your contribution. All right. We're up to segment number four. And, ne- and again... Segment number four is obvious, you know it, you've heard it, it's boring, move your body. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the question's not should I, the question is why? You know, if you're not in a routine of movement, of exercise, the question you need to ask is what will get me moving? Who will, what's the face? That will get me moving. Now I'm going to. I'm just going to give you four very simple ideas here. Again, I'm not. I don't have the time to get into a lot of depth here, but I just want to inspire you to get moving. Focus on that face. Focus on that purpose. Step one: foundation. Set yourself a task, and I think a lot of you are already doing this. Of doing ten thousand steps a day minimum. Okay. That is the best foundation. So if you're starting from nothing, just start walking. Now, if 10,000 steps is too many for you because you might have some physical limitation, then start with 5,000 and build up to it. But set a goal, buy yourself a Fitbit and do not go to bed. Don't let yourself off the hook. Don't go to bed until you've hit the number. Now, if that means jogging on the spot at midnight, then you do it. You know, get the number, then you go to bed. And look for opportunities. Now, that picture you can see, that's that's in the subway in Melbourne. You can see the, 
that where all the spare, all the room is, is on the stairs. Because why? Because I'll tell you what most people do is they switch their brain into neutral. They step on the escalator and they miss out on an amazing opportunity. There are so many opportunities for you to get steps up by walking upstairs, by, by walking while you're on the phone. Get off the chair and get up and walk around while you're talking on the phone. Take, um, there's so many opportunities, taking the dog for lots of walks and playing with your kids and, and, and walking to places rather than driving places. You know, there's so many opportunities and 10,000 steps is not hard. I would suggest get up early, do some, go for a walk first thing, get, break the back of it early. But if you can hit that, I can tell you the rip, again, the ripple effect of that one decision is going to make a massive decision. Then what you might say is, okay, well, now I want to add in some resistance training. And why resistance training is so important is because, because, when you have muscle, it increases your metabolism. It helps your function. It helps you live better. It helps your metab metabolism. It helps with your immune system. So you start doing some real basic stuff. You don't need to join a gym. You don't need to lift weights unless you want to, unless you have some specific goals. You know, get yourself a band. Get Do some push-ups, sit-ups, squats. Do get a, get a towel. Lean against the wall and do stuff. There's so many things you can do. There's so many online things happening right now. Get yourself... Even one, once or twice a week, start to in, introduce some resistance training. Make it fun. Do something that you enjoy. Is it tennis? Is it golf? Is it, is it you know, some sort of sport, basketball? Do something that you enjoy that you will look forward to. And then the other thing, and this picture uh, I took off, um, this is uh, actually a friend of mine. And she's doing the, you know, at the moment, the people doing the 25 push-ups a day for PTSD. And, and this is her family. She's got her husband and her, I think there's three or four, no, there's four kids. And all of them together, this video is on Facebook, so I did a screenshot. And this is her family together doing 25 push-ups a day. What a wonderful thing to do as a family. If you can start to include your family in your movement or friends in your movement or work colleagues in your movement, and again, you've got that accountability, then, then it's going to be so much easier for you to stick at it, stay with it until it becomes a habit, something that you just do, not something that you have to worry about or negotiate every single time. Cool. Cool. All right, so I'm going to ask a question. Those of you that are exercising, that are doing something regular, what, what do you notice? What's the benefit in your, for you? What are you benefiting from? Just type some stuff in. I want everyone to look at this because if you're not exercising, I want you to see the benefit. So we've got sleep. We've got mindset is better. We've got better sleep, less energy, less time, more energy, lower heart rate. Um, clear head, more energy. I can't keep up with it. I'm more switched on, good endorphins, better decision making, better mental state, sleep better, mindset definitely, sleep, mental health, drop weight absolutely. A runner helps with mental health, feeling better after workout, not as cranky with my kids. That's a good thing. Feeling fitter, increased energy. I don't ex that's okay. You don't have to. So, Joseph, now's the time to start doing something really simple, just something simple. And you'll find all these benefits you're seeing coming up in that chat room right now are there for you. They're accessible for every single person right now because it just, walking, the most simple thing, I used to think, because I was a professional sportsman, I used to think it had to hurt to be of value. And I don't know if some of you might relate to that. I used to think it had to be painful or was doing me no good. I now know very, very differently that just going for a walk is one of the best things that you can do. After the incidental exercise, Danielle, you're spot on. Those little things, you know, the walking up and down steps and walking, the, go the longer way rather than trying to always take shortcuts. When you're in a car park, have you noticed, have you ever gone to a shopping centre and you've driven around for 20 minutes trying to find the closest park? Have you ever noticed that? And if you just went straight to the outer, the outskirts of the car park, there's hundreds of spots there. Have you ever noticed that? So you've wasted all this time sitting in your car getting frustrated looking for a close car park and all you have to do is go to the outskirts and park and walk. Not only do you get there quicker, but you have got more steps up for the day. So you get what I'm saying? Okay. 
let's finish. Let's bring this home, guys. You are rocking it. You're all fantastic. Look at it, still coming. The, the benefits are still coming. So have a look, keep your eye on that chat room because there's some amazing things here. All right, now I'm going to just finish this off by suggesting that if you have been at all moved by today, Jody, you've still got this track sheet, haven't you? So we can send this out again. Um, here's, the, here's what I'm going to challenge you. Some of you have probably taken this on after the last time I spoke, but those of you that are new, I'm going to challenge you here to take the 63 day challenge. So what's 63 days? Well, let's talk neuroscience, all right? I, I don't get very new scientific because I'm a footballer and I got beaten around the head way too many times, so I like to keep things very simple. But here's what the neuroscience is telling us, that it takes 21 days to create a new habit. And what we're talking about is a neural pathway in your brain, okay? So a weak pathway, but 21 days will create a weak pathway. So it's a pathway, but it's weak. 42 days, another 21 days, which takes to 42 days, will strengthen it. But if you want a habit, if you want to take one or two really, 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 really simple things and turn them into just what I do, you know, I, I walk, it's just what I do. I eat breakfast, just what I do. I, I eat regularly healthy food, it's just what I do. If you want, if that's what I'm grateful, that's just, that's what I do. If you want that, then you all you got to do is focus for 63 days and hit, win the day for 63 days, one day at a time, one day at a time. Now, it's not going to be easy. There are going to be days when you can't be bothered, days where you don't feel like it, days where old habits are going to try and force you back to where you were. But if you can focus for 63 days, you are going to turn a simple, simple action into a powerful habit. So this is what you're, if you want this, this will get sent to you and I'm sure there'll be a follow-up email come out with this attached. It's a very primitive tool. It's a piece of paper. You print it off and at the top of it, I want you to put the face. What's the face? What is it for you? What's the purpose? What's, why are you here? What's your meaning? Why do you want? What is going to keep you moving forward when there are times when you don't feel like it? What is going to keep you making decisions that sometimes you don't feel like making? What's going to help you resist old temptations or those temptations to eat the donut rather than the piece of fruit, the temptation to hit the snooze button rather than get out of bed. What is it when you think about that face, you're going to bounce out of bed and go, I'm doing it for my kids. I'm doing it for my partner, my husband, my wife. I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for all those people that are suffering out there. I'm, that's why I'm doing it. Now, I want you to, to come up with one, no more than two, maybe writing a gratitude list. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe, maybe your thing is I want to eat the five colours. Some of you mentioned that in the chat room. Maybe that's the one thing you want to change. Maybe you want to eat breakfast. Maybe you want to do 10,000 steps a day is the thing for you. Maybe turning off the TV and exercising with your family. Now, I've put five things there, but I don't think I'm suggesting you need to pick five. One or two maximum. And all you need to do is... Hit the goal one day at a time, one day at a time. Tick the box, tick the box, and all you've got to focus on is one day. Win the day. If you win the day today, and I want to encourage you, today's the day to start, not tomorrow, not next week, not when you feel like it, not when the moon and the sun are aligned. When today, pick something, get started. If you walk away from this session, you go, oh, that was interesting, that was nice, and don't do anything, then I feel like I'm failing. My vision and purpose and passion is for you to do something, pick one thing and make a commitment that you will turn that one thing into an unconscious, sorry about that, an unconscious habit. I'm going to tell you one story here because there is a powerful ripple effect. And I, and I did, I've told this story, so for those of you who have heard it before, I apologise, but there's a lot of new people. I did the 63-day challenge with an organisation at the end of 2019. And after the 63 days was over, we all got together as a group and we sat down and we shared. Now, there was a lot of amazing stories, but I'm just going to share one with you. One lady made her decision to eat breakfast, a healthy breakfast every day. That was her one thing. And so I asked her, how did you go? And she said, I did it every day for 63 days. So she turned that into a, that's just what she does. 
Now I asked her, so tell me what happened? What were the benefits? She said, well, I feel better. And I thought, okay, well, I expect that. And then she said, well, I've got more energy. I thought, okay, that makes sense. She then said, um, I've dropped two dress sizes. And I thought, okay, well, that's pretty impressive. Just from eating breakfast, seems pretty insignificant, but she's dropped two dress sizes. Now, this is where the ripple effect is going to start to happen. This is where the face you've got in your mind is going to start benefiting. She said about three or four days after she'd started eating a healthy, sitting down for breakfast, her teenage son started to join her. Now, he would normally run out the door with an up and go or no breakfast at all. And now all of a sudden he's sitting down with her and they're connecting and they're eating a healthy breakfast together. About two or three days after that, her husband started to join them. So now this one, one simple, seemingly insignificant choice that she was making that she decided to turn into a unconscious, non-negotiable, this is what I am, this is what I do habit. She's not only enhanced her own health and well-being, she's built a stronger family unit. She's influenced her son and her husband. Now, let me ask you this. Who are they going to influence? Who are they going to inspire? Who are they going to encourage? And where possibly would that ripple effect end? You all have the opportunity to impact lives many, many lives, not because you want to be a speaker or because you want to be famous, but because you're the, you focus on being the best person you can be. You focus on your mindset and understand that your well-being is 100% in your brain, in your mind, and, and the things that you do, will, the way that you feel will flow on and, and have a physiological effect on your body, but will then impact the choices that you're making that are going to impact that are going to help you, but are going to help way, 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 way more people. So I'm just going to finish up right there and just put that up for a, 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 just a few seconds. That's my website and email address, and I encourage anyone that wants help, access to any of my resources, please feel free to reach out. I would love to talk to any of you about anything. Um, so I think I'm pretty much done, and I would just... If there's anyone that has any questions that they would like to post in the chat room right now, I'm more than happy to answer a couple of questions. But I just, I think, I, I thank all of you for being part of this. You know, there's nearly 300 people sitting here on this call and I'm grateful beyond belief. Firenza, thank you so much. And Jody, thank you so much because it is my passion that you will all take one thing from today and understand that that one thing is not just insignificant. That one thing is going to have an incredible impact on your lives and it's going to ripple out and influence many, many, many lives. So thank you all for being a part of this and look forward to hopefully doing some more stuff with Neba and, uh, and Jody and Fiorenza. So wonderful. Thank you so much. Is there any questions? Oh, there's a lot of chat. I think it looks like thank you, though. So, yeah, it's just wonderful, wonderful comments and, and, and gratitude. So thank you all. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Well, I, I just quickly jump back in and thank you, Andrew. Um, thank you for delivering another powerful presentation. Um, I believe from all the thank yous I'm seeing pop up on the screen that, you know, people will take something away from today. And again, I'm taking something away. I haven't got omega-3 in my diet, so I'll be getting that when I do my afternoon shop. Uh, I did the 40, I'm at 40 days in my challenge at the moment. Um, the first week was really hard, but now it's like normal everyday life. So I want to thank you for introducing that challenge into my life um, when I did my session with my staff um, yeah, 40 days ago. So, um, and thank you to all the people that have messaged me privately to share their experiences um, after hearing me cry. Um, and I didn't, I tried not to cry, but you know, you know I guess, you know, as a lot you know of- You know what, Jody, your, your tears were powerful. Very, very, very powerful. <laughs> I practiced last night and I didn't cry in the mirror, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, I just wanted this. Um, Julia has asked a question if I had any snack suggestions. So, Julia, yes, in answer to your question about snack suggestions, yes, uh, I do. Um, you want to try and make sure they're protein based, so nuts are a wonderful snack. You know, if you're going to have fruit, it's good, but just try and avoid having carbohydrate or fruit on its own. You want to combine it with some sort of protein. So, yogurt. If you have fruit, have some yoga with it. But nuts, you can buy some really good quality protein bars. Um, you know, you know, some cheese and carrot, uh, or some sort of 
protein with with a vegetable or dips you know there's lots of wonderful wonderful healthy snack yeah chickpeas yep yeah, are a good option so um yeah i thought wheatgrass well if you can handle the taste of it matt go for it <laughs> yeah wheatgrass is you know it's very full of good good nutrients so a shot of wheatgrass is good for you anyway there's good. more i don't know if there's more questions but Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I hope uh, everyone has a lovely weekend. Thanks for joining. Thanks all. Okay.